the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> I'm King, and you husky. King, the swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region, and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in maintaining the right. The challenge of the North was answered, and justice ruled triumphant. The Yukon wilderness bristled with countless small settlements set up hurriedly by men who came to the country to get rich quick. Placerville was such a town, more righteous than many, but it too had its share of lawlessness. In the Green Parrot Cafe, men were crowded in the back room, their voices raised. In the center of the crowd stood Fred Malone, a bewildered expression on his face. What's the difference what he says? We found the knife on him, didn't we? That's right. He murdered Banker Mac just as sure as you're a foot high. Hey, now wait a minute, fellas. We heard all we want, Malone. Quiet. You shut your mouth now, Clem. All right. We gotta handle this thing fair and square like. Uh, nothing fair and square about the way he knifed Mac, was there? Well, murder's one thing we ain't had much of here in Placerville. All the more reason why we gotta take steps to make sure it don't happen again. All the more reason we'll give Fred the right to state his case. Plain for everybody to hear. Mind you now, I ain't defending him none, but, well, I say let him speak up. Well, I ain't in favor of it. He ought to be strung up. But if Joe says let him speak, then I agree with him. Well, I'm the owner of this cafe, and it's my opinion. Time wasted is time talking, and wasted what is it? What? Hang him, man. That's, that's what I say. Sergeant Preston, when did you get in? I got the news from the bartender when I came in, Preston. Well, I'm awfully glad you're here, Sergeant. Yeah, so am I. Now, maybe we'll get some real action on this. You just get in, Sergeant? Yes. I found the town nearby deserted. Everyone seems to be gathered in the cafe. I'm mighty sorry about Banker Mac. Clem found him, and he rushed right over here with the news. Mac was knifed, Sergeant, and we discovered Fred had the knife that seems to have been used. Well, you can see for yourself, Sergeant. We handled it carefully so as not to disturb anything. It might be animal blood, but it don't look that way to me. Hmm. I've already seen Mac. I'd say he's been dead about ten hours. Where were you last night, Fred? I was right here. Right in this room playing cards with Sam and Mike. That's what you was doing the early part of the evening. What time did you leave here? Well, I don't remember what time it was. Where'd you go after you left? I don't remember that either. Ah, uh, listen, he don't remember. And I don't remember, I tell you. I came in here this morning and Clem had just brought in the news. Mike said that since the murder was done with a knife, everybody ought to be searched. That's how they got my knife. Everybody knows I always carry one. And that's your story, Fred? Well, I know it's not such a good one, but it's the truth, I tell you. Yes, you're right. It isn't such a good one. I'll have to arrest you on suspicion of murder. Meanwhile, I want to do some investigating. It was a few hours later... Mike Andrews restlessly paced the floor of the office in the cafe. Leaning forward in his chair, Sam Marshall's look of irritation was a contrast to the worried frown on the other man's face. Will you quit that walking up and down for the love of Pete? All right, so I'll stop. But you better start thinking of some way to stop Preston. I tell you, we don't have a thing to worry about. But the whole town thinks Fred's guilty. Now sit down and take it easy. Uh, now listen, Sam. Maybe you think I'm crazy, but you ain't been up here as long as I have. So what? I'm making out. Everything's working just as I planned it. I'm alone admitted. He don't remember where he was. Everybody knows he was drinking, and everybody knows he was burned up when Mac told him he wouldn't lend him the money he wanted. That's not what I'm talking about. You don't know this Mounty. Mounties are human. All they want is somebody to pin the crime on. Now let him hang, Fred. Then all you we heard to... what he said. He only arrested him on suspicion of murder. He didn't arrest him for murder... What's more, he said he was going to do some investigating. I'm telling you, Preston's one man that's never been fooled. Forget it. There's a first time for everything. This is perfect. Yeah. But I've heard a lot of fellas talk the same way. 
The ones that didn't swing are looking out from behind bars right now. Is he on your account that I got into this thing? You and that rich strike of yours. You'll get every dollar out of it you put in. Yeah, Mike, there's no reason for us to have an argument over this. I didn't mean anything. You just leave all the details to me. I took care of Drug and Fred, didn't I? Oh, I'm not arguing. I'm just telling you that where Mounties are concerned, you have to be sure. If I'd have known Preston was due in town... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Huh? I got an idea. It better be a good one. Look, folks are mighty excited about this. Now, maybe if we could persuade them, like Preston was delaying justice, and that if, uh... Well, if, if the people that take the law in their hands, it might be a good way to prevent any more crime. What do you mean? Ever see a lynch mob? A lynch... Yeah, sure. You think... Say, maybe that's it. Maybe nothing that is it. Well, with Malone strung up, everybody will be satisfied. And if the people do it, nobody can go back on us. Yes, sir, that's it. I'll give you credit, Sam. You sure know how to use your head. That's a good thing one of us does. Now, you get busy stirring everybody up. While Sergeant Preston's busy investigating, we'll have our own private hanging. Two men stirred up the townsmen, and soon an angry crowd stormed the jail in Placerville, a small building that before had held miscellaneous Indian and white prisoners for minor offenses. In Preston's absence, the men overpowered the guard and soon marched Fred Malone out. All right, we mean business, Fred, but just keep stepping. No, you're hanging the wrong man. I tell you, I didn't have anything to do with killing Every Matt. party heard you arguing with him, saying he'd be sorry he didn't stake you. But I didn't mean... No matter what you meant. Yeah, it's cool. Let's get this over with before it starts snowing. Better get a rope to tie his hands. Looks like this is my only chance, and I'm taking it! Hey, look out! He's getting away! After him! Come on! Yeah, what well, Preston hears is... Make no difference what you men thought. You're all responsible for the escape of a prisoner. Sergeant, if there's anything we can do... Well, there's nothing you can do now. King and I'll set out to trail Fred. When we return, the men who are behind the attempt to lynch him will answer to me. On the trail north of Placerville, King ran ahead of Sergeant Preston's pack. As the Mounties' sled covered the miles, a heavy snow began to fall. But the great dog never hesitated. Oh, King! Oh, you husky! Sweeping away from the trail, the wind had driven the snow into solid banks. But the sled tracks covered a level, evenly blanketed stretch skirting the frozen river. Suddenly, the great dog King stopped. Oh, you husky! Oh! What is it, King? He's turning back. I wonder. King, I... somebody back there. I'll have to I'll have to keep going. Keep going, this this snow. Oh. <laughs> the snow fell on the mountain and on King's thick fur as he stood by his master, planting himself in front of the man as if to protect him. Glancing to the nearest drift of snow, he waited a moment, and then raced toward it. On the far side was an opening large enough for a man to pass through. The inside of the drift had been hollowed out, igloo fashion. It was there Fred Malone had sought refuge. What the... King, he's found me. Preston's trailed me. Don't worry, I won't try to escape. How can I out here? Might as well go out. Well, that's funny, seems like I want something. Well, maybe trying to tell Preston he got me caught. But if Preston was with him, he'd be here by now. I don't see him. All right, King, you don't have to pull me. I'm coming. Oh, he's leading me. Say, that's a dog team. Well, I'll be... It's Preston, and he's hurt. He's been shot. I have to carry him. You... Never mind, Sergeant, you'll be all right. I'm taking you to my deluxe cabin. Who shot you? King. Now, don't you worry, King. We'll get him back on his feet. Might take a couple of days, but he'll be all right. How long have I been here, Fred? Two days, Sergeant. How do you feel? 
Fine. I, uh... When I first saw you on the trail, I thought you'd tried to kill me. I owe you an apology. If you were the man who fired that shot, King would be growling at you this minute. He warned me, you see, but I didn't realize the danger in time. Someone else wanted me dead. Yeah, but who? Probably the same man who wanted Banker Mac dead. That, then you believe I didn't do it? You're saving my life, Bruce. That to me. Fred, listen to me. We'll go back to town. I'm still a little weak, but I'll ride in the sled. For the sake of appearances, I'll have to put you in jail. But with your help, we'll bait the trap for a murderer. The news of Sergeant Preston's return to town with his prisoner in custody spread rapidly. With it, another story spread. A story that did more to upset the easy complacency that had settled on Sam Marshall than the appearance of the Monty whom the cafe owner believed was dead. Early darkness settled over Placerville as Sam and Mike Andrews left the Green Parrot. Sure, I told you he was dead. I shot him, all right, but he's jinxed. Jinxed. Pretty healthy-looking jinx. You're as good as handling a gun as you are everything else. You must have missed him. He fell, I tell you. I saw it. How we get into Mac's cabin? Slip him through the back door. You know the place by heart. Once I get to the desk, it'll be easy. I sure hope so. Cut through here. Right. One good thing, the place is dark. You don't think he might have kept that ledger Malone was talking about at the bank, do you? Yeah, he kept all his personal business separate from the banks. Here. Maybe that idea of Malone's was wrong. I never knew Mac kept a set of books for what he lent out private like. <coughs> Mac was a banker. Once he put a dollar in anything, he wrote it down. Fine time now to think of it. He could have saved a lot of trouble if you'd have remembered that the other night. If I'd have remembered it. Who thought of using Malone's knife and then planting it on him when we took him to the tent? Not you. I should have kept my mouth shut about the map. I should have been satisfied to let Mac stake me out. Stake you out on what? Money you lost at my place gambling? I could have gone to him and told him. You could have, but you didn't. If he knew you stole the map in the first place, we're splitting the gold 50-50, and don't forget it. Once I get my hands on his ledger, I'll... yeah, here it is. Oh, wait, like, yeah, this is it. Now nobody will know either one of us had any connection. Then where you are, both of you. What in the? Recollect that, my friend. You bet I will. Rest. I've heard all I need to hang both of you. That trick with Fred's knife is an old one, Sam. When he said he couldn't remember what had happened that night, I suspected he must have been drugged. Today I questioned the men here in town and learned that you two were behind that attempt to lynch him. And they almost did, too. There was one thing that baffled me about this whole business. I couldn't understand the motive for the murder. Obviously, it wasn't robbery. Well, they sure picked a good way to wipe out a loan. So Max staked you, Mike. And you turned around and lost the money to Sam. Oh, the dirty skunk. Mac wasn't the kind to make the same mistake twice. Oh, you can drop that ledger now, Sam. There's nothing in it. What? I put it there today myself. Hey, what's that dog growling at me for? Get away from me. Hey, he's going to... He recognizes you. King never forgets, Mike. He knew you fired at me on the trail. You're crazy. I never fired this, this is the one, huh, boy? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, maybe if you look at him more closely, King. Hey, get him away. Get him... Call him off. It was me. I did it. All right, fella. That's enough, boy. All right. Well, Sergeant, I'm sure glad this is cleared up. Yes, Fred. Thanks to you and King here, another case is closed. <laughs> Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, brought to you every week at the same time, originated in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. The characters and events in tonight's drama were fictitious. Bob Height speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.